Hey guys, this is Omer from MMOs.com and we're going to be taking a look at the oldest MMOs in gaming history. While games like Ultima Online and EverQuest helped popularize the genre, they are not the oldest. Oh, and a heads up for you guys, World of Warcraft was not the first MMO and isn't even actually on this list. This list will only include graphical games, so older multi-user dungeons such as Island of Kasami and Genocide will not be included. Anyway, we're going to start with the oldest game and make our way to the year 1999 where this video will end. That's five years before WoW was even released. Anyway, the oldest graphical MMO was Habitat, which went into beta in 1986. It's the oldest virtual world and predates Ultima Online, which is incorrectly referred to as the first MMO by many by 11 years. The game was released for the Commodore 64 home computer and was developed by Lucasfilms. Yes, the same Lucasfilms which made Star Wars. And it's worth mentioning that Habitat wasn't exactly an MMORPG, as there really wasn't any combat, but it, but it did have a persistent virtual world. And considering the, the year the game launched the beta, uh, 1986, the game was an ambitious project. It pretty much helped lay the foundations for modern MMOs. As unlike older MUDs that were text-based, Habitat featured a graphical user interface and an immersive graphical world, which were unique for its time. If you're curious about Habitat, definitely check out the LucasArts video presenting the game. I'll link in the description and as well as here, so just click on here to see it. It's actually quite fascinating. Up next we have Kingdom of Drakkar, which launched in 1989 and unlike Habitat is an actual MRPG with combat and everything. Uh, this one is a relatively unknown game which had its roots in an older multi-user dungeon called The Realm, which became Kingdom of Drakkar after a graphical user interface was created. It features 8-bit graphics with brightly colored visuals reminiscent of older Ultima games. Uh, surprisingly, Kingdom of Drakkar is still playable today, making it one of the oldest playable MRPGs. So if you want to check it out, it is free to play, so just go to kingdomofdrakkar.com. Up next we have Neverwinter Nights which was developed by AOL which at the time was known as Quantum Computer Services. Uh, Neverwinter is widely considered the pioneer of the MRPG genre as the company behind the game won an award for being the first company to display graphics in an online role playing game. This is a bit odd though as Kingdom of Drakkar had graphics as well and is 2 years older than Neverwinter. But putting that aside, the game ran on Microsoft MS-DOS and launched with a server capacity of about 50 players but quickly grew to 500 by 1995. And like many other older MRPGs, playing Neverwinter Nights wasn't cheap. It cost about $6 per hour to play when it first launched. Uh, moving right along, in 1995 comes Meridian 59, which was the first 3D MRPG and was developed by Archetype Interactive. And we're starting to hit the games that more people are beginning to be familiar with. Uh, Meridian 59 did away with the pay per hour access fee and charged a flat rate monthly subscription. The impact of Meridian 59 on the MMO genre can't be understated as it was truly the first MMORPG most of us can take a look at and easily relate with. The game is currently open source freeware and is being run by its original developers, so if you want to check the game out, just head on over to meridian59.com. Uh, next up we have Nexus The Kingdom of the Wind, which launched in 1996. It's the first Korean MMORPG to make it to the list. The game was developed by a company called Carry Interactive, which was actually a part of Nexon before it split into two companies. After Meridian 59, and probably more so than Meridian, Nexus was actually quite popular for its time. It's a game I actually subscribed to. Yes, I paid a monthly fee to play Nexus The Kingdom of the Winds back in the day. Not back in 1996, but probably around the year 2000. And despite the game's visuals, if you look at it, you can clearly see an MMORPG at work here. And in fact, this game is still around today, so if you want to check it out, you can just Google Nexus The Kingdom of the Winds, and you can play the game for free, at least up until level 49. After that, you have to pay. Uh, moving right along, also in 1996 we have The Realm Online, which was a graphical mod developed and published by Sierra Online. The game featured turn-based combat and it unfortunately only had moderate success as only about 25,000 accounts were registered for the game. In fact, the game only had about 100 to 200 concurrent users at peak hours, which is unfortunately hardly massive. The game couldn't compete with Murray 59 and other games at the time, so it was quickly abandoned by Sierra. The game is still available to play today though on therealmserver.com and after a 7 day free trial it does cost money if you want to keep playing. Uh, next up we have a game called Furcadia from 1996. Yes, it is uh, the furry MMO where players play as anthropomorphic creatures. It is a game largely aimed at furries but it's still one of the longest running MMORPGs and despite having some actual gameplay there is a strong RP community in the game so most of the players are playing for the virtual world slash social experience rather than the actual gameplay. Uh, Furkita is still around today if you want to check it out and is actually one of the first MRPGs to really utilize user created content. And not only is the game still running today, it's still getting updated today as well. So it's not just being supported by freeware, it's actually still being regularly updated which is pretty impressive. And moving right along, we have Tibia, which launched in 1997 from a company called Sifsoft in Germany. And despite its original launch in 1997, Tibia is still surprisingly popular today with over 10,000 concurrent players online at this very second as of this video. And like for Arcadia and Nexus, it's one of the longest running MMORPGs of all time. The game is currently free to play with an optional subscription, so feel free to check it out.
and I'd wager that fans of retro looking games would probably like Tibia. Again, despite its age, it's a pretty complete game. Up next is Ultima Online, which released in 1997 through Origin Systems and was designed by Richard Garriott. Uh, despite not being the first MMORPG as many people falsely attribute to the game, it was really the game that brought the genre to the masses, as it was the first MMORPG to reach 100,000 subscribers. Ultima Online was also the first MMORPG I personally played that got me hooked on the genre. It's a game I've played for at least 8 years, and it's a game I'll go back to every once in a while just for fun. Like Tibia, the game has been running continuously since its original launch in 1997, and most recently enjoyed the Ultima Online Time of Legends expansion in 2015. The game was considered revolutionary for its time because it was really the first MMORPG that allowed thousands of players online at any, at any given time, plus it had persistent world housing, which is a feature you don't even see in games today. Next up, also in 1997, is a game called Dark Eden. It's actually quite unique because it's one of the only MMORPGs with a horror theme out there. And plus, it's not set in the same fantasy setting most of these games have been set in, instead it's set in modern times. It's also the second Korean MMORPG to make it to this list, as it was developed by the South Korean studio Soft Dawn. The international version of the game was in service between 2008 and 2013, but unfortunately shut down. The Korean version, however, I do believe is still running. And even though the game never was popular in the West, it did quite well in Korea. Uh, next up we have Lineage from NTSoft, which launched in 1998. This is actually a major title on this list because it's actually the most profitable game on this list. As even though the game launched in uh, 1998, the game made about $339 million in 2015. Yes, this old game is still in service in South Korea and makes a killing. It's actually NTSoft's most profitable game. So yes, it's a huge success even today. Uh, the game was originally developed by, or rather designed by, Jake Song, who also worked on Nexus The Kingdom of the Winds. Uh, Lineage's North American servers ran from 1998 till 2011, but unfortunately shut down after that. The South Korean servers, of course, are still running. Also, to put some of those numbers in perspective, uh, Lineage today is the third highest grossing MMORPG in the world, after Dungeon Fighter Online and World of Warcraft. So that is hella impressive for an older game. Up next is EverQuest in 1999 from Sony Online Entertainment. It's probably the most revolutionary game on this list after Lineage and Ultima Online. It's really the first mega popular 3D MMORPG and the most successful game in the West after Ultima Online. EverQuest was actually so successful in the West that within a year after its launch, the game's subscription numbers had surpassed the reigning champion of the time, Ultima Online. Uh, like several other games on this list, EverQuest has been continually running since its original release. In fact, the game has enjoyed a whopping 22 expansion packs since release. 22 expansions! Which probably makes it the MMORPG with the most expansions. If you play the game today, it looks a bit different because the graphics have been overhauled a bit. The video in the background though is from the original tutorial. Up next we have a game called The Dark Ages, a Korean MMORPG from KRU Interactive, the same company behind Nexus The Kingdom of the Winds. In fact, it features that same cartoony art style as well. And given the release date, it really wasn't able to compete with games like EverQuest and Ultima Online, especially in the West, so it was never really that successful. But clearly it's successful enough to keep running, as uh, KR KRU Interactive still manages to maintain the game's servers. Moving right along, also in 1999, we had Hellbreath The Crusade from the Korean game studio Simontech? Simontech? The game launched the beta in the West in 2003. And despite its age, it still maintains a pretty loyal player base even today. In fact, if you Google Hellbreath on Google, you can find countless, countless private servers for the game. The official servers for Hellbreath have long since shut down, and in fact, the, even, even the relaunch version of the game called Abaddon the Apocalypse also shut down. So it looks like the only, the only way to play Hellbreath today is through private servers. The next and last game on this list is the forthcoming, which launched in 1999 from the Canadian game studio Vercom Interactive. So yes, we have a Canadian MMORPG on this list now. Uh, the forthcoming was the first MMORPG to introduce the Rebirth system, which is now popular in games like Ragnarok Online and numerous other titles. Uh, the game boasted about 500,000 uh, subscriptions by 2002, but those numbers unfortunately could not match up to games like Ultima and EverQuest, which were the juggernauts in the genre around this time. The game only ran from uh, 1999 to 2006 before it shut down. Anyway guys, that's it for this list of the oldest MMORPGs in gaming history. I'm curious if any of you guys have played some of these games, and if you have, let me know what you think. I mean, I've played Ultima Online, and it's really stuck with me as one of my favorite, well, actually my favorite MMORPG. So I'm curious what you guys think about these games if you played them in the past. Anyway guys, later.